Hello everyone, welcome back to a new episode of Backbone. Last time we left off, we met our friend Renee. We seem to have a partner on this case now. Hey, it's another raccoon. And now we're in Gastown, because there's apparently a place here that we need to investigate. I'm going to move all the way to the left side of the screen, and then just work my way. No shops for the van delivered to that way. <clears throat> yeah, so now we're just going to work our way to the right. It's Mo again. Get your papers. Is it, what's happening locally? What's happening? Like what? Seeing suspicious traffic? Nope, I got better things to do than count cars. I got news to sell. Any funny locals I should watch out for? I'm funny and very local. Wanna hear a joke? Sure. What do you call a dead baby rodent? Peekaboo. <laughs> That's wild. Uh, I knew you'd like that one. Anything spooky going on? Yeah, man, the pigeons are getting crazy. Somebody's got to poison the bastards, I'm telling you, or else we're gonna have the- have Geezer Plague Part 2 on our hands. <clears throat> As- uh, At least Geezers are useful, they deliver stuff. Geezers don't deserve the hate. Geezers don't deserve the hate. You got respect for dirty, mindless birds now? What's next? You open the door for a cockroach? Never mind. Anything else? Got anything a lazy tax driver would enjoy? You want news, crosswords? Or I got a little something something for the grown-ups. Thought dirty mags were illegal. It's a coloring book that has suggestive things to color in. Perfectly legal. Maybe not that exciting. Uh, what's the paper headline? <laughs> Grand Shepherd Temple opening scheduled for the annual Ape Day Parade. What about the crosswords then? Only got the ones for kitties left. Uh... <laughs> I don't think he wants a coloring book. He has said he had kids. Maybe he'll like the crosswords for his kids. Uh, I'll buy a paper. Okay, two loons, please. Here you go. Thanks. Is that you, Bo? No, I'm Mo. Who's Bo? The rabbit from Granville. Shush, go away. You're scaring off my clients. Okay, so wait. Mo was... Okay, so they are two different people. Interesting. Doc? Oh my, what a magnificent snout, my boy. You've got a bone structure many kinds could only dream of. Thanks, I grew it myself. Of course, your kind has its own inherited problems, but I'd love to take a closer look if you don't mind. Perhaps there's a correlation. Who even are you? You seem kind of weird. Ah, oh, excuse my manners. My name is Dr. Bartholomew Fisher III. Doc for short. I study jaws. So about those fangs of yours. What about them? Could you bear your teeth like so? Say, rawr. Show you mine if you show me yours. Preposterous, I am not the subject here. Fine, you ready? Rawr. Fascinating, no sign of overbite. Slight concave curve to the canines. No yellowing at the base or the tip, but not too pale. Overbite? Overbites sig signify lower ethical standards resulting in abhorrent behavioral patterns. You're not a sexual deviant, are you? What? Oh god, you're an awful person. <laughs> oh god. Okay. What do you like to know? I wouldn't ask otherwise. Oh, never mind then. Concave curve? Indicates that your intellect is at a lower level than for faux carnivores, but not too bad. I imagine you're a creative sort. Wow. I imagine you're always such an asshole. Stop this pointless quarreling. Let us engage in science. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> What a jackass! Oh, what a weirdo racist. I hate you. G go away, dog. <laughs> Welcome. Can I interest you in some honey nut glazed apple sticks? I'm looking for something fresh and seasonal. Well, I did finally get a shipment of tomatoes and dry onions. Finally? It's been unbelievably cold. Or unseasonably cold. Slowed down the growth of lots and the crops and the greenery. The apes are taking care of it, they say. Oh, I didn't hear about that. Alright, news about suboptimal agricultural output merely makes the front page, huh? Is it serious? We should be fine, it's just we're so reliant on the agriculture and the greenery, so fresh stuff is going to be more expensive for a while. You got red apple cigs? Surely do. Three loons for a pack of ten. Actually, I'll pass, thanks. Oh, where is anything else I can do? You got any sterling cider? Starling cider? 
Sure, we've got regular, red berry, and pear. Which is the most popular. Red berry is my personal favorite. Feels the most summery. Got more due today? Got plenty of each in stock. Why do you ask, hmm? Just curious, do you sell anything special? What you see is what you get. It's all quality produce. Thank you. Goodbye. Okay, so it's not you. Ocean Crunchies. Good for the munchies. Doesn't look too fresh. Could this be the place? No, we've already found that out. This is not the location. Now I will run out of here like a lunatic. Alright. Read a newspaper. Okay. I expected something to happen, but Sean? Yeah, I'm on my smoke break. That's fine, I'm just passing the time. Well, heck, aren't we all? Preach. So what's up? Guess it wouldn't kill me to make small talk once in a while. Why electrics? You know where you stand with all the electrics, unlike everyone else in this life. I should get you to fix my TV. What make is it? Uh, Dimsky 250, timeless classic. I'll never change her. It's a Dimsky 250. Picture's gone, so I use it as a radio. Oh, an ancient artifact. Bring it in, I'll see what I can do. As soon as I get a chance. Yep. What are the locals like? They're all assholes. Why, though? Because they live here. You in this place? Yeah, I've been here for a couple of years now. How are you liking it? Rent here is so steep it'd be cheaper in West End, but half the folks there don't even have a stable supply of juice. You gotta follow the loons, I guess. Yeah, it just does my head in. I'm selling fancy new colored light bulbs while half the population rely on candles. Is it gonna get better? Doubt it. It is what it is. Once you make it, you can help other people. Uh, I mean, I, yeah, once you make it, you can help other people. Make rent, make stuff, help others do the same. My motto, one day. I try to help people. Good for you, man. Leave you to it. Yeah, helping out others, man. That's what it needs to be about. Uh, okay, you're a dog. Poochie. Welcome to Poochie's Reads. Buy some books, please. They're good for you. Oh, you got these things with pages and words? Sir, this is a bookshop. What are you in the market for? Got anything by Renee Wilson? Hmm, name rings a bell. Oh, the young fox rider. I got her book right here, yes. What's her book called? An Introduction to Systemic State Power Dynamics. Not the catchiest. How was it received? Be honest, it wasn't. Quite an achievement to even get it published, and she did well not sounding hysterical, but you're about the first person to ask about it. She's young? Yes, a debut at 25 years old. Really quite unusual she managed to get it published. Enough about Renee. What books could you recommend? I hate it when people ask me that question. Do your own research. Develop your own taste. But aren't you the expert? Yes. Forgive my outburst, I'm sure you're genuinely curious, but most folks just consume a mindless diet of cultural zeitgeist. Well, what's been recently published? Recently, Love is in the Air and Kill Me If You Can. Oh, and a fascinating little book about the philosophy of lockpicking. Uh... What's the one on lockpicking like? Starts by explaining the fundamentals of how locks work and what we can learn about life from them, but of course it goes deeper. Ah, oh, cool. Can I buy one of these two books? Care to at least be at least the bare minimum more specific? Kill me if you can. Sounds thrilling. I was gonna ask about the lockpicking one, actually. Kill me if you can. Sounds thrilling. Free loons, if you're sure. Uh, actually, I'm broke. Got some, are you trying to annoy me on purpose? If so, it's working. Got something on the apes? Ah oh, yes, our glorious leaders, whose treatises are mandated to stock. Obviously, I have plentiful copies of the Eight Codex here. I'll pass. Is there something else I can help you with? Let's move on from the book talk. What can you tell me about the local area? 
I'm a bookseller, not a tourist guide, but we do have the Gourmand's Gallivant around Gastown, if you're interested. <clears throat> I'll pass on that one, thanks. Yes, it's a bit tasteless, tasteless, pun very much intended. Been here long? Been running the store for 12 years, took over from my mama, Shepherd bless her memory. It's, if not her shelf organizing system. You want to sell books till you die? I certainly hope so, that's how I want to go, just after reading the last page of a great novel. I like books. And you're easily pleased and always welcome here. Yeah, I do like books. I love reading. Been doing a lot more reading, uh, recently. Ooh! Hi! Well, hello there. Mm-hmm. Okay, so yeah, we in the bookshop and then liquor shop. I could get should get into that liquor shop quickly. Looks official to me, impressive. Yeah, let's get in here. All done, Grandpa. See you next week. Mm hmm. Suspicious. Look around here, Tuna. Hey, friend. I'm Dorton Tuna. I give you fun facts whenever you press my button. Go ahead, press it. Do it. Eggs are very nutritious as well as a great way to decorate your home. Plants emit an ultrasonic sound when injured or under stress. It's like they're screaming. Beavers eat a million pizzas a day. No one thinks about you as much as you do. Rocks are old, very old. One third of your life is spent working. Lobsters are illegal. You will cry on average 64 liters of tears, I'm guessing that was going to say. Hiccups have no purpose but to annoy you. Your memories are not objective facts. They can also change over time without you noticing. Staring at yourself in the mirror is not healthy. At one point, you were the youngest person to exist. When you drink from a cup, a little bit of your spit goes in the cup, and that's gross. The color you see in the dark is called intrinsic gray. The louder you speak, the more correct your opinion is. <laughs> okay, I'm done with you. <laughs> you are funny, though. Can't just barge in there. The owner's watching me. Okay, well... Let's see what Louie has to say for himself. Hello, name's Louie. What can I do for you on this fine day? Louis or Lewis? Probably, I'm, I'm just gonna go with the Lewis. I've seen that particular spelling still be called Louis, but I'm gonna go with Lewis. Looking for something to treat myself. Ah, uh, very good, sir. He's looking for a dark or a light liquor. Perhaps that perfectly balanced something in between. What would you, what would someone like you recommend for someone like me? Uh, well, far be for me to presume, but you seem like a man who likes to take the road less traveled. Creative type, would I be wrong? Finally, someone gets me. Aha, uh -huh, then perhaps a modern, more experimental bottle, like a Moreau Oaked Red. Sounds delicious, but say I wanted something more... exclusive. Hmm, not quite sure what you mean. Something that no one else has yet. Maybe like what you just got delivered, the top of the shelf stuff, the backroom special edition shit. I'm willing to pay big loons for less than legal goods. What's the rarest thing you sell? Probably this one. Ah, oh, that would be the bottles of Fritz Caraldo. Apparently only 100 were ever made, and I have two bottles for sale. It's rarer than whatever just got delivered? Well, no, it just arrived, but I know what's in it. Boring old Starling cider. Nothing else, nothing someone with refined taste like you would want. Maybe I do want all of it now. Ah, ah, I really appreciate your enthusiasm, but I'd have to take inventory and, uh, there's bookkeeping. Why so flustered, Lewis? Something wrong? Sir, this is my shop. I won't be harangued. I won't be harangued like this in my own shop. Now please, purchase something or leave immediately. In truth, I'm a journalist. Few questions and I'm gone, okay? Journalist? There's... Nothing, but if it'll make you happy and leave me alone. You got any buyers for these crates? I... I mean, I haven't even unpacked them. I, I told you, but, you know, how about a free sample of my own porter? Are you really gonna pay me off with hooch? Goodness, no, I'm just being hospitable. A drink to smooth things over always helps. Where are you buying these crates from? Just my usual wholesale supplier. I'd love to only sell my own brews, but sadly people are slow to love them. If they had more taste, then... then... Not having money problems, are you, Lewis? It's just a little slow, but the parade will make up for it. All those parties. People get thirsty. Have you heard of Clarissa Bloodworth, Lewis? 
Because you're uh, very suspicious right now, I gotta say. I, I've heard of her. Who, who wasn't? Who, I imagine that probably supposed to be hasn't. She owns that bar, the Bite, I think it's called. She own anything else, perhaps? I'm not sure, I don't... I, I'm not familiar with her business dealings, I'm afraid. I know about the flesh, Louis. Now I need your help. Sir, please. I don't, I don't know what it is you want to hear, but the shop is my life. It's the only thing that matters to me. I can help you, but not if you don't talk to me. Talk about what? You wouldn't understand. I mean, if there was something... Nobody will know. I hate Bloodworth. You'll be safe. This isn't just about me. If it was, then maybe, but... I I'm sorry. Please understand. Just leave me. Help me understand. I'm on Team Louie. He'll just make things worse. Louis, Louis, I'm investigating Clarissa. I got your back. I suppose, if you found a way into the storage room after I dropped this key... I'll take a look. Don't go anywhere. Okay, you dropped the key. Cool. Crate. Inspect it up close. The faded Starling Cider logo on the side. The box is a simple construction of cheap wood with a flat lid. Look at the lid. The lid doesn't appear to have a lock on it, and there's no obvious way to open it. Think about the box hard. Inspect the lid. You run your fingers carefully along each ledge of the lid. At one point, there's a tiny recess in the side. Lever up the lid. Little effort, the lid pops out from its groove. Look inside. Beneath the lid are a number of small packages, individually wrapped in thick silvery paper. Sniff the packages. The silvery paper has a chemical tang. The rest of your olfactory observation is filled with the musty basement smells of damp and old cigar smoke. Hold the puking. Unwrap the package. Peel back a layer of silvery paper to reveal a neat square of flesh. Sniff it? There's a melange of intoxicating... a melange of intoxicating scents. Sweet fatty with notes of acidic tang. Inspect it. The flesh is light pink with a striated texture. I can't fucking do this. I've seen enough. Okay. Okay, so we we got what we needed. They are selling it. So you saw it. Illegal fish fillets. It's a dangerous black market. Don't you start trying to fuck with me. I... surely you understand. When did you find out what was in the crates? Only recently. I was told not to look, but I had to know. If only I hadn't, then I could just pretend. Tell me everything. No one else will give you this chance. But... but if she finds out I told anyone, I'll get thrown over the wall, you understand? If you tell a soul, I'm worse than dead. What do you do with the boxes? Nothing. I just look after them until they're re-delivered. Delivery? A woman calls, asks for the usual. I got- I get one of my boys to deliver the crate to her. I was instructed not to ask questions. The caller. Who is she? Her name is... Uh, uh, Baiwa? Bajwa? I'm guessing that's just an I, but it's kind of long. Uh... Baiwa. It's all I can tell you, sir. I could write down the address for you. It's my head if Black Bloodworth hears of this. Baiwa who? Tell me more. I don't know. I would never ask. How did you end up with boxes full of flesh, Louis? I didn't have a choice. Face it, fate has conspired against me. Fate is an excuse, you know that. It's just, why me? Why her? Neither of us did anything to anyone. Just worked hard and paid our taxes. It's the damn city's fault. Why isn't her medicine free? <sighs> yeah, I mean, medical bills are stupid. Very, very, very stupid. And it's incredibly unfair. Probably because life is horribly unfair. Miss Bloodworth is keeping my sister alive, you see. She pays the medical bills. I even thought about selling the shop, but the loons wouldn't have lasted. People in those boxes have had, had families, too. I know, and the thought haunts me. But Leah is my family. How could I choose anything over her? Thank you, Louis. I have to go now. Go? What are you going to do? Gonna find out more about this Baiwa character. 
You weren't forced into this like I was. Why get involved with such a nasty business? I read you you won't like where it leads you. We'll see. Just please swear you won't tell anyone about this. I can't bear to live in even more fear. You got nothing to fear. Thank you. Shepard guides you. He doesn't give a fuck. We're on our own. I think it's time you left, sir. One last question. When is this Bawa expecting delivery? Well, Joey took her crate over a few days ago. She's expecting a box of cigars today, but I'm not sure about the other crates. Tell Joey he's got the day off. I'll take the cigars. I... you can't. They'll suspect. And if it gets back to me, Leah... Trust me, I do this all the time. Give me the cigars. I... fine. I can't stop you. My life might be worthless, but other people will suffer if you're not careful. Stay safe, Louis. Take them on the house. Cool. Okay, so do I have like an inventory or something? I guess not. Good luck, Louis. Okay, that was- that's sad. He is being taken advantage of. I should call Renee. So you're saying I should find a payphone or something? I'm guessing? Okay, well let's just run back this way. Oh boy, that is uh, that is messed up and he's doing it because yeah, he's behind on medical bills. I hate that. I hate that so much. Medical bills are so stupid and it preys on people's need to continue seeing their loved ones and care for their loved ones, but it costs so much money. Wood palace furniture? Need a new couch. Or any couch. Got you a paper. I got you this, you asked. A newspaper? Okay, I guess. Did I get wrong with the paper? Yeah, I don't read the news. Makes me sad. Yeah, me too. Thanks, Howard. How's my man doing? Very good indeed. Anything that's not shoveling baby poop is a top-notch good time in my book. Have my life getting you down? Imagine someone small and loud tugging at your tail and craving attention all day every day. But it's love. Worth it. Doesn't sound like my jam. You do you. Especially while you're paying me, heh <laughs> So, second kid soon, huh? In a month. You need plenty of loons to have kids, so I appreciate the gig, Howard. I appreciate you. Owie, don't make me cry. You think having kids is worth it? I don't know. Is there anything else worth living for? I like that I made a person. When I'm gone, they'll remember me. It's hard to forget you, man. I know. That's why we make a great dynamic duo. My unforgettable charms, your... face? Gotta go. Anatoly's my guy. The Duval Din Hotel, not for the likes of me. Okay, are you two playing like, what is this, hacky sack or something? Oh, you're just throwing a ball back and forth. Ginger. Good afternoon, young lad. Good afternoon, how are the pigeons doing? They're good, thank you for asking. They know me better than anyone by now. Better than your family? Yes, and they certainly pay me more attention. People have no sense of the value of their elders anymore. Depends on the elder. Why, yes, I suppose you're right. We're all just people, aren't we? Yep, we're all lonely together. There's a difference between loneliness and solitude, young fellow. And which are you, for real? I am solitudinous. Of course, every now and then I wonder if there's someone out there who could be solitudinous with me. Anyone in mind? Just someone gentle and quiet, with an interesting story. Noted. It was pleasant meeting you. Good day, young sir. You too. Bye. That's very sad. Grandfather Steam. Watching every gas town as always. Keep it up, old man. Renee. Ah, here we go. Who's speaking, please? I got a new lead. Ah, I'm listening. Clarissa is using a liquor shop as a front. And who buys from there? Clarissa has the shop owner's Louie deep in her pocket. I get it, but who's the inn buyer? A woman named Barwa. Any idea who she is? Not yet. She puts in a call to the shop and the boxes get delivered from there. Did you learn where? 350 West Georgia State Street, ring a bell. An address in the top's interesting. Feel like heading over for a house call? Heck yeah, I love peeking in the people's windows. Hmm, might not be the best idea to just barge in and confront her. 
I have a delivery for. Ooh, good idea. But that won't get you into the apartment. Maybe she'll invite me in for tea. Maybe. Served with a slice of fresh uh, flesh cake. Renee, that's disgusting. Get on with it. Yes, ma'am. You're gonna be fine. Call me after and head straight home, okay? Home? Well, it is where you live now. Right. Speak soon. Hello? Harold? Hmm, no. No, I... but where did... hmm... You okay there? Oh, don't mind me, Sonny. Just wish I could remember. You lost something? I dropped my ring. Blasted slippery thing. Sure you dropped it right here? Think so. Through this grade, I think. Lost like keys like that once. Had to smash in my window. These grates, they should have nets. So irresponsible. Maybe you lost it somewhere else. I suppose, but I thought I heard a clink. Want me to look around? I may not be in my prime, but I need that ring back. If I can get down this manhole... Too dangerous, and it could be miles away by now. What if I forget about Irma? Who? My late wife. My only love. The ring was precious, but you'll always have your memories. That's not true. You get to my age, you learn that's not true. There are times now where I realize it's been days since I thought of her. Are you very lonely? You have, a fa you have any family? No, just me for 17 years. I do miss having someone to share an afternoon with, feed the pigeons, do the crossword, you know. Oh, uh, come on! I know the person for you! It's the lady! You gotta go. Hope you find what you're looking for. Harold, I got the perfect date for you. There's a guy I think you should meet. Sure your heart's in the right place, but you don't need to pity me. I don't. I'm just connecting two like-minded strangers. Not that I'm interested, but what makes you think I'd enjoy talking to him? He likes pigeons. He's got a lot of love to give. He's a sweet guy, very philosophical. He likes pigeons, probably. And who is this gentleman of which you speak? He's right over there. Should I introduce you to? Well, you can tell him that if he wants to. I'd be willing to share my bench with him for a while. I'll be happy to hear that. Yeah, cool. Look at me playing matchmaker. Hey, what would you say to some company? That's sweet of you, lad, but I think I'd just bore you. I can't tell stories like I used to. Not me. Someone who could also use some company. Oh yes, that'd be the kind of person that might put up with me. Person's over there, feeding pigeons. Oh, that well-dressed lady. I wouldn't want to interrupt her. I already squared it with her. Go on. I don't know. I'm not used to meeting new people anymore. You like pigeons, right? Certainly. Irma used to keep a fancy one. And you might like Ginger. She's right there. Go talk to her. If you say so, I suppose it couldn't hurt. Okay, Harold, let's go. Tell her the raccoon sent you. Good luck. Oh, look at these two. Look at these two. Ginger and Harold. I wanna- I wanna talk to them. Uh, I can't actually- I'm pressing the button. Oh, my work here is done. There we go. Oh, look at me playing matchmaker. I love it. No point moving away from the high street yet. Alright, so now I guess we just go back and talk to Anatoly. Anatoly! Let's drive, Dolly. Yes, where to? Tops, let's go. Cool, and the game saves. Awesome. If it ain't Mr. Detective, what's new, Chief? Did you crack the case yet? No, got a big lead, though. Ah, lead on, partner. Sounds like this is the bigger deal than usual. You're, uh, being careful, right? Relax, I'm not about to deprive you of your best customer. Best friend, sure, but if you're my best customer, how come you don't tip? Because best friends don't need to tip, Anatoly. Being polite. Polite? Huh, didn't realize you were a part of high society, are we? You fixing to become a minister? Just watch the road, huh? No. Alright, and with that, I think this is a pretty good spot to go ahead and end this episode of Backbone Off, so I hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.